six years ago today, Kuzi scored to beat the Penguins. Caps advance out of round two. I think that was the single happiest, most jubilant moment of my sports life. Short on that list, a couple of other items. Number two, probably that Howie home run. Danny, your number one play that made you the happiest in your sports fandom is? Divisional playoffs against the really good Chicago Bears team, 10-10 at Soldier Field. You knew that it was special when Joe, excuse me, 14-14 at, uh, at Soldier Field. You knew it was special when Joe Gibbs put Daryl Green back to return the punt. And like idiots, Bears punted the Daryl Green. That's 52-yard punt return to the house. Daryl Green pulls a rib muscle. Uh, but still scores, hurtling over somebody. Little old Randy Duye, just shy of nine. I blacked out. I screamed so much, I saw stars. I had to collapse onto the couch. I, I like I needed like a, somebody to fan me off to kind of revive me. I, I caught the vapors like an old Southern woman back in, uh, in in Reconstruction times. It was the greatest. George is in Gaithersburg, wants to join us on Grant and Danny. What play gave you the most joy? Hey, guys. First, I want to thank you for putting a big smile on my face thinking about those plays. Oh, yeah. Got to do it every now and then. Got to smell those roses again. (laughs) The one that makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up is, even to this day, is Regan's on fourth and one in in Super Bowl 17. Now, here comes the diesel. Miami Dolphins. Up three, fourth (laughs) quarter. So, I'm, I'm, I'm just a little kid for that. So I've obviously watched the YouTube video or, or watched video of it so many different times over. How old I've, were you? Probably three. So but, you don't remember it. But like I, so the memory, I do have something burned into my brain. My dad, my Uncle Kirk, all hanging out at the house watching the game. And I remember the, the moment of cheering, that moment of everybody yelling at the same time. Even though I was too young to know what was going on, I, that is burned into my brain. Let's go to Anthony in Fairfax on the fan. What's up, buddy? How are you? You know... Last caller stole my thunder because that was my my play too. Riggins, 70 chip, Super Bowl 17. But what was so amazing about it, fellas, was everybody watching that game, the whole country watching the Super Bowl, knew Riggins was going to get it. Oh, yeah. They knew he was going behind Jacoby. Everybody knew it, and they still couldn't stop it. He only had to get one yard, and he got 43. Well, and the iconic image, of course, Anthony, and you know this better than I do, wasn't alive yet, was. You know, you see the picture still. It's on our boss's wall, but it's basically the jersey being pulled out of his pants, you know, holding on for dear life, and he's just running away. This is one of the most legendary plays in D.C. sports history. Let's go to Robert, who's in Sterling on Grant and Danny. Robert, six years ago today, my favorite play in D.C. sports history happened. What was yours? Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, buddy. My, uh, my favorite play has to be the uh, Howie Kendrick Grand Slam. Uh, I remember I was at, I made last minute plans to go to Nats Park for the watch party for that game. Oh, nice. And one of the best decisions I've made because we were down 3 1 and the crowd had shrunk a bit because everyone thought we were going to lose. And I think it was Soto and someone else, I forget, hit back to back home runs, tie it up. And we take it down to the extra innings and then hitting, seeing that home run and the crowd just exploded has to be my favorite. All time, buddy. Dude. I mean, it was always like those watch parties were so epic. Oh, by the so, way. it was so cool. It, 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 again, there there have been little hints and moments where is baseball going to work in DC? Like it didn't happen a couple different times. The teams moved. What's how's it really going to be? Strasburg's debut and, and a couple of the nice playoff moments. But it's like, is this real? Those made it feel real, right? Those kind of shared experiences in the bullpen in the rain, people throwing beers up in the air against the Brewers. So here's Amazing. what I realized with the Caps Cup run, and it was a nice reminder a year later with the Nats, DC can throw a hell of a sports party when its teams are on runs. Mm -hmm. And I long for that, and I think about it all the time. But you think about 7th Street, you know, people by the thousands outside of Capital One Arena, shoulder to shoulder, setting up chairs like they're there for a fireworks show on the streets, you know, watching the screens outside the arena. Mm -hmm. Um, the, The watch parties or the bullpen. You're not doing that on a Thursday night against the Dodgers or a as it were, Tuesday against the Orioles. Like, it's it's just not the same, and I don't know what the ceiling even is. But this city, when the teams are, are on their runs and all of a sudden the people that don't care all year get in and there's just the same, it's like spirit week at school where everyone all of a sudden is happy to be there. 
It is special, man, and it is awesome. Chris is in Hyattsville. What's up, Chris? What's up? Uh, Danny stole mine, but I can't think of a better one. So I'll just describe how that moment related to me. Uh, Danny and I are about the same age. I'm, I think I'm a year older, but uh, you you can't recreate the the excitement that a kid has in your adulthood. So there's been really great moments since then, but the Dale Green punt return is like the peak of like my enjoyment in sports because the bears were a national team that everybody loved. They had mm-hmm. Dicka, they had, you know, McMahon. Uh, there was the strike season. There was a lot of drama. Doug Williams was a black quarterback. That was a story being discussed. The game was tied. It was a frigid game, which looked incredible on television, by the way. And it was tied. Green makes the most athletic play I've ever seen during a game. Hurdles a guy like he's in the Olympics pulls his rib cartilage and scores essentially the game winning touchdown. Yeah. And then he followed up by an incredible game against Minnesota. And he was grabbing. You could tell. He was clutching it. Yeah. A clutching right away. You knew he was hurt. He didn't know what it was, but he was, something was not right, obviously, but he still finished the play. Frank Herzog. Man. Frank Herzog, dude. Frank Herzog. Sorry. That's my guy. Sorry about it. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Let's go, Frank. Because, I mean, you can't, it, there's, how many times have you, like, done something with, with your kid where you go, oh, this is going to be special. Watch out for this. And then it's not special. My dad's sitting there telling me, when Daryl Green goes back there, it's special. Like, it, they didn't do it every time. But when Daryl Green goes back there, it's special. And then the most special thing possible happened. He returned a putt for a bleeping touchdown in, in a playoff game to win it. Come on, dude. It matched the hype. Feel good start to the show today. The moment that made you feel best as a sports fan. The single play that gave you the most joy. That's what we're talking about on Grant and Danny here on the fan. Hater the set. The kick. Here it comes. Swing it away. The Nats were down three to one, eighth inning wild card game against Milwaukee. That was the first game they had to win to even get to the division series where Howie would homer in grand fashion against the Dodgers and eventually win the World Series that year. But they were steamrolling toward another immediate exit yep. without any offense. One run over seven innings, couldn't really get anything going. And then it took miracle like that little uh, duck snort from Zim that fell in Michael A. Taylor with a check swing, but it grazed his hand. So they said, no, this one's going to go your way this time against Hader. Who against was an all-star, Hader. Yeah. One of the best lefty relievers in the sport left on left. Soto, the hero with an assist, obviously in the outfield defensively. Thanks again, Trent Grisham. Big, How are you, pal? big thank you to Mr. Grisham. Three runs will score. Nats have the lead. Here comes Dan, Hud- uh, Dan Hudson to save the game and to, to get the Nats to the division series. I will still argue that moment was the loudest and certainly the wildest that Nats Park has ever been. That individual moment, yeah. Go back and look at the videos. People just throwing whatever drink they had up in the air, that like beer and water all over the place in the outfield. Absolute bedlam and euphoria at that moment. They they didn't win a World Series game, but they played three of them. They had a seven-run inning, I think it was, when they exploded early on against the Cardinals in the NLCS. That ballpark has never been as loud as that because it was the release, just like my koozie moment that mm-hmm. got this whole thing started of people going, oh, thank God, we did it. Years and years and years of seeing them not come through with that hit. They finally got the hit, and it was the kid, Juan Soto, who we still love because of that. Let's go to Luke in D.C. on Grant and Danny. We're reminiscing six years after Koozie's goal to beat the Penguins on the anniversary of the play in sports that made you the most excited. What's up, guys? How y'all doing? Hey, buddy. So, okay, D.C. sports for me, it would be when R.G. was going out of bounds and then he turns it up um, and goes the distance for the touchdown. That was absolutely I redid my whole basement thinking that that next year was going to be special. Um, and the electricity when he comes 
people with the flag the next year, that was bananas. But uh, but sports moment for me would be the shot uh, that Christian Leitner hit at the at the tournament. That was absolutely. I still get chills thinking about that one. Leitner, the turnaround that's jumper a, against Kentucky. I maintain that's the greatest game at any level I've ever seen. That Kentucky epic with with Duke going back and forth with Leitner winning it. It was just it, perfect. Now, I don't know if he's not a DC sports fan. That's an interesting play. Like that was an amazing play. Mm-hmm. The, the Griffin one. Don't get me wrong, but they got to. Wasn't it like three and six or something that yeah. day? I mean, it was middle of a season. They weren't that good yet. It's an amazing Griffin play. I understand the whole stadium was going nuts as well. You should have. But for that to be the single most excited you've ever been uh, is interesting to me. Let's go to Gary and Brandywine. What's up, Gary? Hey, what's going on, guys? First hey, time dude. caller. Love the show. Thank you for uh, making the call. Me, we almost appreciate got me, you. Uh, you know, Grand Wagon and the local teams. Uh, yeah, I'm a Boston boy. So my favorite, my favorite sports moment, man, rightfully so. Adam Vinatieri, snowmageddon kick to propel off 20 years of NFL dominance against the Raiders. Bring the pass to the Super Bowl. You go with that one over Vinatieri from 48 against the Rams a couple weeks later for the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. In That's... the snow, and they're they're all clearing as uh-huh. much ground as they can. By the way, that was six minutes after Brady fumbled, and they called it not a fumble. Uh, with all due respect, sir, that was a fumble. And you know it, and I know it, and everyone knows it. Don Brady knows it. I think he does know. Charles you think he knows? Lewis. In the same way that he admitted that he deflated the footballs the other night, he should have come out and defeated the, 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 you know, admitted that he also fumbled. He deflated the, the Raiders' chances and all of football's chances for 20 years with a fake play to begin it. Having said that, that was... So crazy. And who's more clutch? When you start thinking about some of the huge kicks yeah. in Vinatieri's career, remember the Super Bowl winner against the Panthers? I think that was in Houston, if I remember Sounds correctly. right, yeah. But he beat Carolina on the Stephen Davis, Jake Thalome, Carolina Panthers that year. Because Carolina came storming back in that game, if memory serves. There yeah. wasn't much momentum, and he snatched it. I think you always knew if you were a Patriots fan. If that guy's lining up end of the game, what a feeling that You feel be. good. <laughs> yeah. Eagles have that a little bit with Jake Elliott. I don't mm-hmm. think he's ever missed a big kick. I certainly don't have that in D.C. Like, you, you were waiting to see that ball sail through the uprights. Let's go to uh, Brendan, who's in La Plata, down on 301 in, in Maryland. What's up, Brendan? Hey, Brendan. Hey, hey thank you for uh, taking my call. Got it, buddy. You got it. Hey, so while I was on hold, I originally had uh, Devontae smith Tully's goal in game six versus the Lightning. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, no, it has to be Ovechkin's goal in game three of the Stanley Cup final with Doc, Doc Emmerich's call on it and just the jubilation that I had and that we had a whole house party and everyone just went nuts when that happened. On his way so to the that, con, Smythe, Caps in that game three, if I remember, exploded. Was that where they scored six? No, so game three was 3-1. I think. Okay. That was the close one. So Ovi started the, like a minute into the game, Ovi scored. And right DSP scored in, in that game as well, by the way, in the, so in the, game in the third four period. At home is when they, they exploded. Yeah, that's when they went nuts. Uh, DSP had seven goals to choose from. Yeah, I think DSP scored in that one too in game so four, he didn't did. he? He scored in both of those home games in the Stanley Cup. Let's go to Marvin in Landover on GND. What's up, Marvin? Yeah, thanks for taking my call, gentlemen. Hey, man. Hey, you know something? Mine's is like a two-folded answer, so I'm just going to throw it at you in this way. It was the 1982 NFC Championship game, uh, Washington versus Dallas. RFK is just like this iconic, rumbling, natural earthquake that's happening. <laughs> and there's two plays. The play where Dexter Manley does the loop before the end of first half and knocks out Danny White, I really got great joy out of that. But the Cowboys aren't easily killed. So Gary Hogaboom, wow, great name, actually leads them to, like, tie and score, 17-17. They're running that daggone screen that they kill the Redskins on time and time again. And Dexter Manley reads it, tips it up in the air, and big man Daryl Grant catches the ball and steps out of the tackle for for the winning score. Or I think I've probably score. heard Marvin. Score. That's a great, by the way, a great breakdown yeah. of the play. Good recollection. Totally right on. I think I've heard more people talking about that play than maybe any play in DC sports history other than the Riggins play. Because it was the Cowboys. I mean, it's NFC, NFC title game. We'd already chanted, we want Dallas as, as a fan base the week before, as the, in the waiting seconds. Dallas is talking trash. 
They, they were up seven at that point. Dallas with the ball, get ready to drive down the field. You just knew it until they didn't. Amazing. Let's squeeze in one more. Patrick's in Fredericksburg. Got to be really quick, Patrick. What's up? Hey, what's going on, Grand Danny? Hey, quick, quick story about the 2018 Caps, uh, Caps run. So my favorite play was obviously the whole fees of save. Um, funny thing about that playoff run, diehard Caps fan, born and raised in Virginia. I missed the entire playoff run and the entire cup run because I was in basic training for the Army. Mm. And the reason I learned about that play and their playoff run were handwritten notes that my dad would send me. So I was reading all of these plays in a handwritten note from my dad. And so that my imagination from that game is, is kind of ingrained into my brain. So that's, that's, that's cool. how I found out about, that's about amazing. The, uh, the run. I, I've told this story before, but first of all, that's incredible. And thank you for your service. I had to send my buddy, same kind of deal. He left middle of the football season, a bunch of letters. And I had to send him the letter saying that our favorite player, Sean Taylor had passed. But when you're, when you're secluded and you don't have any way to the world, that guy's seeing a handwritten note. Think about that. Yeah. Saying that, uh, that the save was made. Yeah. The whole stadium thought it was a goal, except the few people that knew.